Because all the time. So active, so active praising the Lord, so active praying to God, and I appreciate the way you are singing together, the way you are praying together, the way you are just enjoying the company of the Lord and the company of each other together. That's beautiful, huh? Yeah. You people, come the rain, come the sun, you are here. Imagine you came on time, you people, you are so good, eh? Thank you very much. Rain is a, is a symbol of blessings. It's a sign of blessings. Rain makes things grow. Rain is, when the things grow, we receive life. We are able to breathe fresh air. Rain makes the food that we eat. Rain washes us. And so we are blessed that this morning some of us were being washed with the blessings from our God. Amen? Amen. Yes, thank you very much for sacrificing and having on time. You are very punctual. God bless you. And we have sung also very well. And I would request that we put that in the good news today. Eh? We sing it together again with one good voice together. Good news today. Oh, yes, good news. The one we sang today. As the, our, our technical team just said, what they would like to say is that we are here to reflect on the good news. The good news, which is God Himself as a Father speaking to His children. We are all His children. Whether we are 120 years old or 190 years or just one month, we are all God's saved children. And God speaks to us. Can we, are we ready now to say to sing together? Yes. Do we know that song we use today? Yes. And we hear all of us singing it. And let's sing now together with one group of voice and say, God, thank you for giving me the mouth, not only to eat, but also to sing. Now let me sing to you also, okay? Let us sing together good news today. One, we go.
and we hear about this good news of salvation, the good news that saves us. We who are lost, God took the initiative to save us, to heal us, and He is the good news. And He invites you and me to be what? Good news. He invites you and me to be what? Good news to everyone that we meet on our journey. Are you good news? Yes. Are you good news? Yes. Or you are bad news? No. Yeah. Let's be what? Good news. This is the beautiful thing we can give to each other in this community here. In this school of this school of ours, in our nursery, in our primary, in the community, the good gift we can give to others, which even saves us from a lot of tensions and pressure, is just to make sure that we have good news and we don't see we, we don't we don't complicate the life of who? Others. When you don't complicate the life of others, life becomes good, life will become good news. So our mission is to be what? Good news to the people we meet. As Moses was good news to the chosen people of Israel. Moses we had today in Exodus chapter 34, we hear that he has always been interceding for his people. Interceding means somebody who stands on behalf of the people. He sees these people suffering, he does not close his hands and say, okay, let them suffer. No, he stands on his behalf and advocates and he kind of tries to support them, to plead for them, to speak on their behalf. This is what Moses did with the people of God. He spoke on their behalf and tried to say, oh, please help these people of yours who you created in your image and likeness. And you and me, the people young like this, I am invited also to speak on behalf of others, to help others, to open my eyes, to see that my brother is suffering, my sister is suffering, and I said, teacher, can we help out this person who is suffering? Like yesterday when I was walking around, and it was so beautiful to see some people who were taking care of others. And then they said, okay, I'm going to tell the teacher about this. And it's beautiful. That's what makes our life easier. It was so nice also to see your brilliant faces. And I was greeting almost all of you there during your break. You were coming and shining all of you. Then I said, oh, this is nice. It's nice to be here, to be with you, young people. Amen? Amen. Please keep your faces shining, guys. Eh? Yes, keep them shining, keep them good and positive. And I saw the faces were shining because I think something was coming from in the good heart that you people have. The good heart that we thank our parents who have helped us to get that goodness in us. We thank our teachers who are here who have helped us to, to get that goodness in us. The salutations of the course for the brothers and fathers who are here who have helped us to get that goodness in us. The friends of ours who have helped us to create that goodness in us. The beautiful gift we can give to others is good news. Let's try to keep up from the bad news. The bad news. And so Moses is able to advocate, to stand on behalf of the people and speak to God. It's like saying, the people say, oh, no, we are you, we are nothing, we cannot be able to speak to God. God is so powerful, high on high. Then who are we? And this was, then Moses says, okay, let me listen to God's voice and what he's saying, and let me speak to God, and I come to tell you people what God is saying. This is what we are talking to be people who are others also with our words but also the way we live our life. That when we live together, we encourage each other. Do we encourage each other? Or we discourage each other? Do we work with each other? Do we support each other? I can see that some others are even holding each other, saying, okay, my dear, it's okay, wake up, huh? It's okay, things will be okay, don't sleep, huh? That is nice, huh? No, we are, all of you are good, nobody is sleeping. Eh? All of you are very good, nobody is what? Is sleeping. Now, Moses speaks to God as when you speak to a friend. You know, when you speak to a friend, you say everything that is coming from your heart. Yeah? You say, you speak to a friend and you know you are going to be at peace. This is what we have come here to do also, to speak to God as one who speaks to a friend. Our God is not a, a tough God. Our God is a friend. And when you speak to God, we are like speaking and praying to him. This is what we are going to do, my dear brothers and sisters, okay? 
Are we speaking to God even in the silence of our hearts? Yes. Even right now, if we leave this place without speaking to God, without telling Him what's in our hearts, then we are not praying. A true prayer is the one who comes before God and says, God, our Father, you are merciful. You are a Father. You are also like a mother who takes care of your children. You are a friend. I am speaking to you. What is it? In my heart, things are not easy, but I'm speaking to you. This is what we are called to do, dear friends, to speak to God as a friend. So, if you have not started speaking to God, right now, start speaking to God. Huh? Speak to God and let Him speak to you, as Moses did. And when He came down to meet His people, His face was shining. You know why? Because when we constantly speak to God, when we constantly speak to God in the language we have, remember we have the language. When we constantly speak to God, you know what happens? We are never the same. When we tell God what is happening to us, we are never the same. People begin seeing light in us. They begin seeing goodness in us. Maybe that's why I was able to see goodness in your faces yesterday. Because you are people who use your simple language to speak to God. This is not even you. Which words will I use to speak to God? How will I speak to God? No. Your own language, what your heart is telling you, is what you should use. The simple words you are using, which come directly from the heart, is what you should use to speak to God and tell Him, thank you. And tell Him, help me. And tell Him, help my, my, my parents, help my teachers, help my friends, help those who are suffering. Those simple words is what pleases God. That's what Moses did. And what, that's what the people of Israel did. They spoke to God. And when Moses came, his face was shining. And let us keep our faces shining. When we speak to God, our faces keep on shining. Otherwise, they are dark. And when our faces and our lights shine, you know what happens? Then we are able to help others to see the light. We are able to see, uh, help others to see the, what is beautiful around us. We are able to help others to see the good things around us. Otherwise, if we are, and this comes from inside the heart, because the heart is good. So all the goodness comes out. And it's able to be shown on your face. Somebody said that if you are happy, at least inform your face. Eh? If you are happy, at least inform your what? Face. Have you informed your face that you are happy? Yeah? And that happiness comes from the heart. Not because everything is okay, but because you are, your heart is at peace with God and with others, and especially with yourself. So let's continue to be that light that helps others to see the dark of their lives. Because there are sometimes when our friends don't know how to go on with life. Maybe they are down, maybe they are sick, maybe something is going on. We are able to help, to help them to uplift them. When we do that, then we are light to that those friends of ours. Then we are light to our teachers as well. When we are able to walk together with them and to work together with them, to listen to them and to do what they are helping us to do, then we become light for others. And this is also what we are called to to be light for everyone. And to keep the treasure of the good news, the treasure of God who should come first alive. This is what we heard from the Gospel of today also, which we do today from the Gospel of Matthew, and that he sells all that he has advised the dream. He talks of especially two parables. The parable of the treasure which is hidden in the field. Imagine somebody just holding it like that. It's like when you are walking here in your gospel car, and you walk there, and you find something which is a treasure, the big thing. Remember they used to keep those treasures because they were have no values. Where to keep the money and keep the things. So they would, somebody would go in the garden, dig up, and put the treasure there. And some people even forget about it. And so imagine you are walking here in the gospel, and then you go in the garden there, you find something precious. Oh, then you cover it up. You don't steal it. You cover it up. And you go and sell off everything and come and buy it in the right way. This is something which is precious. All things are good, but this was precious. The treasure. This is what the Lord tells us. That we are able to cut off all the negativities, all the jealousies, all the anger, and all whatever does not help us, so that we can embrace the joy 
we embrace the love, the ease that the Lord gives us. We are able to kick off all the pride, all the anger, all the jealousies, all the negativities in order to embrace whatever is good. And the second, you see now, this is shows also how God is so free, is gracious. This man was not looking for anything, he was just walking and finds the treasure there. Meaning God gives us all the gifts that we need as they come. He is free, he gives us even much more. Even less is shine and the rain shine on the right power on the good and also on those who are not good. This is the, God, the abundance of God, the generosity of God. So who gives as he wishes? That like this man is just walking and he receives the treasure and then he's able to sell, to pick up whatever he can to embrace that which is precious. And the second treasure, the last one, is what we have here. Of a merchant in Sarko, This merchant is like a business person. He's looking for some precious stones. In this one is looking. This one the Lord tells us that in this kingdom we are invited to look for God and look for each other. Look for the good news. And when you find God, we are all everything. Everything else falls in line. Do we know the song Sing here first, the kingdom of heaven? Sing here first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all the things shall be added unto you. Seeking past the kingdom of heaven, when we have God, everything else will fall in line. When we speak to God and tell Him to take on of our situation, everything will fall in line. So, thank you very much, dear friends, for being such good light for others. Let's pray in this Eucharist that the Lord may help us be light for others, to warm others' hearts with our goodness and love. To show others who are in darkness and pain that there is hope, that you are not alone, that we shall go through it together, and also to treasure the gifts that we have received from God and to share them with others. Amen.